previously on Death by the Fox. Ah! Hello everyone, my name is Death by the Fox, and today we're playing Katoa Shoujo. This is episode number 5, if I'm correct. If not, well, crucify me in the comics. comments, I'll even leave a little video notation. But I'm joined here today with Sensor Cats. He even told me he was a cat. Well, you missed that, but anyways. So, let's get right back to where we left off, shall we? My morning alarm goes off, and I flail about uselessly for a while until I remember that I decided to give morning runs another shot. I don't know if this was my greatest idea, but I'm determined to keep going. This is about my health after all. Sure, things haven't been great lately for me, but that hasn't made existence so intolerable that I'm not going to try everything I can to stay healthy. Besides, it's all about asserting some kind of control over this thing, right? If I can manage that, well, I can manage anything. At least that's what I keep telling myself. Once again, it would appear that I'm not alone on my run. And he has apparently been here for some time. I need to move this. So I don't do that. It looks like she's already worked up a good sweat. <laughs> when just when the hell does she come down here anyways? Oh, it's you. I'm surprised to see you again. <laughs> Why is that? Well, not many people actually managed to come back for a second try. She frowned, seemingly annoyed by a passing thought. Like the rest of the track team, for instance. Still, it was only supposed to be on a voluntary basis, so it's not that big of a shock. And I guess it's pretty early in the morning. A shrug, and suddenly it appears that she's forgotten what she was talking about. The frown disappears entirely, and she seems to snack back to her previous train of thought. So, come on then. What? You're here to run again, right? Well, yes. So come on. I find myself suddenly grabbed and yanked onto the track. This is rape. I'm being raped right now, not really. I'm being assaulted against my will because someone wants me to run and that is manhandling. Things seem to be set on mirroring yesterday's run. <laughs> that is, I seem to be struggling while Emmy moves with an effortlessness that I find viable, enviable. She's inc it's incredibly bothersome to be so easily worn out. I know that I should be patient, work towards things gradually, but it's difficult to stay positive about this. We round the track and start on our second lap. Emmy seems to have grown impatience of keeping pace with me and begins to pull away. This is where I gave out yesterday. Will I be able to do more? <sighs> okay. 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 We're going to go on the slow recovery route. On the Shizune route. So I have to walk through up right here. And so we have the opportunity to take it easy. And then we get to, we get to kind of like pop it out, right? Right, so, um, they change up the dialogue a bit, but we can, if we go for it, we get 100% completion. If we take it easy, we don't. That's what the walkthrough says. So we're going to go for it. What am I doing here? Am I really just going to fold and let me pull ahead? I speed up. Ha! The second lap's done quickly, and without even considering, I keep going. Emmy looks back over her shoulder at me and grins. Still going? Wouldn't you think uh, well, I'm out of shape? <sighs> Emmy laughs without breaking her stride, no less, and speeds up even more. Well, this is the way we're going to play things. I increase my own pace as well. I can feel my lungs burning and my legs are starting to question what, just what the hell I think I'm doing. Lactic acid screams into my muscles, but I close my ears. I can't let myself fall behind because that would be a loss. The rational voice in my head inquires mildly when we just started playing a game. I'd answer it, but I'm having a lot of trouble thinking at the present. She's so fast. How the hell does she keep... <gasps> it's like a string pulling at my chest. A choking up feeling of narrowness and pain. Before I can think about anything else, then... Oh shit, the track disappears from under my feet. A stumble, one hand shooting down to clutch at my chest, and the other hitting the track to keep me from falling on my face. Emmy whirls around and her eyes widen. He's so... She yells at me sprinting from the other side of the track. What's wrong? Eh, nothing, just keeping your keep your breathing steady. Calm down. Don't panic. Don't panic. Do you need me to get the nurse? I close my eyes, shutting out the outside world. <laughs> my heart struggles to regain its rhythm. Slowly, the pain in my chest begins to subside. Soon, it's gone like nothing happened. It was nothing? No, something happened there. I open my eyes again and glance at a very worried Emmy. I think I'm fine. My voice sounds weird, even to myself. Oddly, even, in a matter of fact, makes Emmy frown. 
I don't think you are. She seems to come to a decision and nods to herself. Right, you're coming with me. You've got to see the nurse. Emmy grabs my arm and drags me up. I feel a bit wobbly and I refuse the shoulder and but I refuse the shoulder Emmy offers for support. Honestly, I'm a little ashamed by my own weakness. I'd really rather not have Emmy concerned about me, but it seems to be too late. Heck, I'd really rather not have anyone concerned about my condition, but at this point, it seems to be late for that as well. I'd like to be able to deal with the whole thing on my own without being a bother to anyone else. While wishing for wishes, I'd rather not have this condition in the first place. Nurse! Emmy crashes into his office without knocking, but it doesn't alarm the nurse in the least. Good morning, sunshine! What's up? Sunshine? Anyway, he calmly sips from his coffee mug, but lays it down after following Emmy, Emmy's gaze to me looming in the doorway. He's out! What brings you here, my porn music? We were running, they stumbled over and started grabbing his chest, and I thought I'd come get you and make him wait, but... I thought I'd come here and... Wait, and make him wait here, but he said he was okay, but then I thought you should see him anyways, and... Easy there, Emmy. Calm down. He said, oh, what happened, my brother? I don't know. We were running, and then my chest started hurting like the time before, but it went away after a few seconds. It was just a flutter or something. And the nurse frowns as if to say that just a flutter is some kind of oxymoron. <laughs> I didn't mean it. I didn't mean quite this when I suggested to get some exercise. You've got to be more careful, he said. I was being careful. I just come to think of it, I just got into a race with a member of the track team. It just doesn't seem as well reasoned as I thought it would. You just what? Uh, that is, I was racing Emmy. Emmy, is this true? Emmy fidgets, looking adorably contrite. Um, well. Finally, she can't seem to bring herself to say it out loud and merrily nods. The nurse sighs and rubs his forehead with one hand tiredly. Emmy, you've got to be more sensitive to the limits of others. I don't know if he told you, but he so has a bad heart. And getting him to race you was incredibly irresponsible. Uh, I, I actually started it. The nurse is stunned by my statement. <laughs> you what? You, well, we, we were just running and Emmy started to pull away and I uh, sped up to catch her. The nurse stares at the ceiling, mutters a prayer for patience to some god or another, and looks back down at the both of us. <laughs> so you're both stupid. That's a comfort, I guess. Now come on, Hisa, I've got to make sure your heart's not going to explode or something. <laughs> I dutifully obey and follow him to the adjacent room where, he, where we are certain that I am, in fact, not going to keel over and die. So, how does it feel? I don't know. Nothing much. Tired, but it just might be from the exercises. You should stay here for a few hours of rest, and we'll see how you feel after that. I am not going to object, so I lie down on the infirmary bed. <laughs> and that's the episode. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> a thoroughly miserable Emmy comes in after getting an earful from the nurse in the other room. I can hear what he said through the closed door, but I'm sure it wasn't pleasantries. It probably sounded like this. I'm sorry, I'm an idiot. Look, I'm I'm really sorry. I should have been more careful. Hey, you didn't know. It's not your fault. She looks awfully down and sorry, and my reassurances don't do anything much to help her. I want to make it up to you. Again, with that decisive nod. So you have to come to lunch with me. Oh... I'll bring it for you, okay? Something really, really good. I start with a, you don't have to, but then shut up and just nod at her when I see her face. Good. Then I saw her face. Da -na -na -na. I'm a believer. We? Oui. Yep, the weather's nice, so now the roof's a great spot for lunch, you know? I see. You'll come, right? Uh, you wouldn't deny me the chance to make it up to you, would you? Are you hitting on me, ma'am? Of course not. Great, see you there. She's hitting on us. We're about to get laid. I stay afloat somewhere between asleep and awake, feeling completely drained. Not only of my body, all, all of me is limp and paralyzed, apart from my senses. I swallow with difficulty and then try to lie as still as I can, which in this state is not a very hard thing to do. The nurse is shuffling around on the other side of the curtains he drew to give me privacy. I can see his shadow shifting about in the sunlight. He's opened the window of his office. It's windy outside. The clean white curtains flutter in the breeze with a heavy, lazy motion, like waves. Light sifts through them, slowly, half-absorbing into the fabric. 
I close my eyes. The breeze on my face feels like the soft fabric of the curtains. I listen to the sound of my heartbeat for a moment, trying to shut out the sound of the nurse tapping away on his computer and my own heavy breathing. It's steady. Damn it, not even a week and I end up like this again. I really screwed up this time. I should have known better than to play the half-baked sports star in front of a real one. And why did I just try to act brave, like the heart flutter was no big deal, even when it was obvious that it was? It was just a reflex to push it away to keep it inside. I didn't want it to happen, but it did. I didn't want Emmy to see it. Ugh. Stupid, stupid, stupid. I have to be more careful. I will end up in the hospital again, or worse. Or worse, expelled. That's what my final thought before I gave in to the tiredness. I fell asleep. For how long? What time is it? I'm feeling a little lightheaded and I keep blinking compulsively. Pushing the curtain aside, I squint my eyes against the unfiltered light pouring in from the window. The texture of the canvas feels like nothing like the wind before. The nurse looks up from his work, sitting exactly where he was before. How are you feeling, my man? I can't really tell, so I don't answer anything. I'm feeling kind of groggy from falling asleep at such a weird time. Hopefully I don't look too weird. What time is it? He curled in the question to gain some orientation. The nurse looking at his wristwatch before answering. Things seem to happen in slow motion. Quarter past ten. I try to think for a moment what that means, but I'm not really sure. You didn't answer my question, he so. Oh, fine. Climb down from that bed then. Let's see how you're doing. Don't! I tried to do exactly that, only to sway dizzily when I moved too fast. The, nerves, the nurse moves to support me by an arm and sighs. Stand up too quickly is what I was going to say. Just sit there. I'll check your pressure and make sure. Did my good intentions sure lasted for a long time. I shut up, embarrassed with myself, while the nurse gets busy with an old-fashioned contraption in my arm. After a couple of minutes, he puts it away, looking neither pleased nor unhappy. You're all right. Head stop spinning? Yeah. Good. How are the contents doing? You didn't show a very good judgment out there, he said. I saw the retort I was going to make. That's what I was thinking to myself, but hearing it stated by someone else makes me want to protest. What he's saying is not pleasant to hear. It doesn't make him look any less right. No, sir. He nods, still looking as neutral as it was before. It'd be easy to be angry at him if he had said, told you so or something, but he doesn't. I can try and help you keep your health, but ultimately the last call lies with you. Hopefully this little episode will be something that will remind you of that. Here, a note for your teacher. To avoid interrogation, I take the slip of paper he's offering and then make my way, then make my leave, as I can't think of anything else to say, or even really want to. Stay out of trouble, you hear me? I don't think it was anything but a scare. The next time could be different. I hear ya. There's some way to get to the school building straight from the auxiliary building, but I'm not keen to find out and possibly get lost, so I go from the exit that I know works. I stop at the stairs of the auxiliary building, deliberating whether the moment between going back to the dorms to get to my books and stuff or going straight away to the class. The sun stings my eyes, so I head to the dorms. The halls are quiet as the courtyard was, naturally so since everyone is in class. I knock lightly at the door of 3-3 and push open the door when Mudo calls from the other side. Sorry I'm late. Fifteen pairs of eyes turn to me. Good morning, Nikai. Mudo seems to be somewhat confounded by me coming in late, as if I interrupted his flow or something. Judging from the rambling lectures his classes tend to be, that might be the case. I pass him the note the, nur the nurse gave me. Mudo takes it with a nod and reads it, qu and reads it quickly. He lifts his eyebrows and gives me some kind of stern look, but doesn't say anything. Just nods solemnly again. I shrug and he gestures at me to run along, so I naturally do. Only two er pairs of eyes remain keenly following me as I walk to my seat. I'm not surprised in the least when I feel Misha's fingertips, <laughs> fingernail prickle through my shirt about 15 seconds after seating myself. Psst, where were you? None of your nunya. Where is none of, none of your damn business? And this is probably the worst answer I can give, as it only serves to pique their curiosity. But I have no entry, energy to come up with elaborate or cover stories right now. <laughs> However, Misha backs off. She's unexpectedly fast to give up today. In a minute, she's back at poking me with her finger. Come on, tell us. C Chan is very interested too. It was just my wishful thinking. She just talked about it with Shizune. 
probably devising ways to get me to spill the beans. No! She retreats to negotiate again. <laughs> Okay. As a member of the student council, it's your duty to tell us why you're skipping class, especially if it's something fun, fun, fun. Look, man, I don't want to fucking talk about it. Like, do you not, do you not get, like, where this character is going? He doesn't want to talk about it, so you're gonna, like, try and, like, be all like, Hey, 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 why, 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 why weren't you in class? Hey, why, why weren't you in class? Is it because you were having a little sexy time on the track? No, 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 man. I don't want y'all to know that I had, my character had a heart attack, dog. So we aren't going to talk about it, okay? Give up, I'm not gonna tell. Is that so? Yeah. <laughs> she thinks about this for a moment. <laughs> That's stingy, He-Chan. I can hear the pout in her voice, disappointed and downcast. My chair is super squeaky. She retreats again for a moment to negotiate with the brainy half of the dynamic duo before returning. I think we should have lunch together and discuss more about this, Si Chan says. It's our treat. Besides, you need to make up for not being here in the morning and we need your help with the work. The other students around us are starting to give us looks, probably because Misha is leaning so much over her desk that she's almost bumping heads with me. Her curly hair brushes my neck. It smells like shampoo and very much like whatever she puts in there to make it go like that. I think the girl in front of me is trying to eavesdrop. Hope nobody's getting the wrong idea about this. I'm really not sure how it would be possible to get my other, any other kind of idea. <laughs> Luckily, Muda says stays oblivious or deliberately ignores Misha. So far. I can't really win this one, can I? I promised to eat with Emmy too, but I can't. I can't be in two places at the same time. Alright, so here's the plan. Here's the plan. Now, we can be blunt and we can be all like yo dog we have plans with other friends however we want to make a good impression on shizune because we're going the shizune route and we want to hook up with her right so we can we can go with emmy and rin and join the emmy route but we don't want to do that no i like emmy she's cool but she doesn't have a leg to stand on in this route currently because we're trying to help shizune out so we'll go get free lunch because free food is the best fine i'll come with you but get off my back for the rest of the class, okay? It's a deal, He-Chan. That's a relief. Dude, my glasses are like digging into my ears. This is so comfortable. On the way to the student council room, I can see the students walking back and forth during halls, probably in preparation of their own projects. The festival is practically here, but that means that there are only two possible reasons that my help is required. Either there's only a small amount of work left and they just want a helping hand to wrap up in the mundane final checks they're obligated to do, or there's a ton of work left and Shizune is putting on a calm face as a torrent of built up procrastinated work threats. <laughs> Once inside the office, I look around and see that it's deserted. I guess this means there isn't a lot of work left, huh, since there's no one here and all? It's always like this, He-Chan. This confirms what I have thought before, but I've never actually been able to confirm definitively. Shizune and Misha are the, are the student council. The whole student council. Damn, so it is true. The student council really is you, only you two? Shizune looks as if she's stuck wondering whether to be ashamed or explode with anger. And Misha is equally divided between laughing and trying to stop her. <laughs> well then, He-Chan, you'll be happy to know that since it's just us three, we have a lot to do. A lot, a lot, a lot. That does not make me happy at all. But it seems to make Shizune very happy. <laughs> just kidding. It's actually not that much work, He-Chan, so we can afford to enjoy a little lunch first. Ha, 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 ha. The two of them produce a small array of plastic containers seemingly out of thin air. Magic. Mm hmm. It's chicken cutlet with tomatoes and soybean sprouts. Doesn't it sound delicious, Si Chan? It was just made this morning and it's still warm out, so eat, eat, eat. I take one of the containers and open it. It looks nice and certainly smells good. The fact that I'm really hungry adds to that even more. Wow, this looks great. Where did you get this? That isn't important, He Chan. There was supposed to be a stall selling lunchboxes, but the girl who was to run it suddenly said she couldn't do it. Si Chan said, What a waste. It was a lot of work to trick He Chan into making this. <laughs> it was a 
lot of work to trick him into making this. Hey, what the hell? So, C-Chan wanted to see if she could do it, but then decided not to, right, C-Chan? Shizune sulks angrily. Shooting Misha displeased look. I don't think I'm supposed to hear that story. This is your test food? I'm eating it too, He-Chan. And C-Chan is too. That doesn't answer the question. Nevertheless, I split a pair of chopsticks Shizune offers me, pick up a piece of cutlet, and pop it into my mouth. Disgusting. It's surprisingly good. I didn't expect Shizune to be such a good cook. Shizune puts her chopsticks down to signify curtly towards Misha, who gulps down her cutlet with noticeable, di with noticeable difficulty in order to speak to her. Yu-Chan, don't talk with food in your mouth. It's not like I enjoy doing it. Anyway, how motherly to show you that kind of concern. You can't even eat right, He-Chan. That's all it is. It's a stalemate. I can't eat in order to talk to Shizune, who can't eat in order to chastise me for eating the wrong way. Misha, caught in between, is in the same situation and looks most disheartenedly about how this is going. Either way, our food is getting colder by the second, and it wasn't piping hot to start with. Wherever this was going, it dies down pretty fast once we all realize that, and we eat. After a while, the bell rings, but Misha makes no attempt to sell, tell Shizune, so I'm sure they're planning to skip classes and spend the rest of the day in here again. Hey Chen, do you have any plans for the festival? N no, not really. After all, I've only been here a week. What could I set up in that time? Wah ha 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 Hey Chen, you helped us out so much. Don't sell yourself short. Okay. We're serious. Okay. The two of them seem to get indignant over the strangest things. You're going through, right, He-Chan? You should at least see what we've accomplished. You should be able to look at what they've done so they can fully understand their work. That's my belief. You're no exception. He-Chan, you should definitely go. If you don't have anything planned, then maybe we can even go together. Do you need a hand? If there's anything you need help with, I'm fine sticking around. I feel much more at ease than I did earlier. My previous concerns and fears long gone. I'd forgotten this morning about Shizune's trouble entirely until now, having fun with Shizune like this. Having fun with Shizune it seems like an unfamiliar concept to think of, but looking back on it, I've really enjoyed the moments I've spent with Shizune and Misha these past few days in spite of everything else. If we might be going to get together, then maybe I can afford to stick around a little longer, and I guess it beats class. Really, He-Chan? Okay, we can consider this you were paying us for free lunch. Great, this is great. Really, really, really great. C-Chan was hoping to bring this up again later anyways. Ah, uh, wah. Wow. It's not a free lunch at all. Normally I'd be angry, at least slightly unsettled, but my mood has improved from earlier on, so I'll let it slide. Helping them out turns out to consist mostly of me stamping forms and making what seems like 10,000 copies apiece of 50 different budget reports. It's not that hard, but very boring, and according to Misha, the simplest of the tasks they deal with. I feel myself getting more and more tired, and with that, less eager to return to class. This is especially bad, because the more time I spend out of class, the harder it seems to just get back up and go back. These two, they're a terrible influence, terrible role models. Not that it bothers me all that much, and I'm sure no one looks up to them, but that's the principle of the thing. Done. Ah, that was fast. I'll be finished before this period's over, I think. No, he chan Everything is done, so you're done too. That doesn't make any sense. Are you telling me that this is all arbitrary and you've been keeping me here for the hell of it? No. But we have kept you long enough. You should get back to class, he chan You can still make up for you can still make it for most of this period. What about you? Of course we're coming to you. Of course we'll be right behind you. Reassured, I start heading back to class, but the period is almost halfway over, so I start thinking that it would be pointless halfway there and pass the difference between this class and the next drinking juice in the hallway. I keep an eye on the door to the student council room, but it doesn't open. What's taking them so long? Are they busy wrapping up my share of the work? Well, it shouldn't take so long, unless there's more, and they just wanted me to leave. The more I think about it, the likelier it seems. She's an A as well, not an idiot, but clearly she's unable to just come out with things. Maybe it's because she can't talk, so it's harder for her. She is Misha, but all in all, as easy as they make it look, there's still a difference between casual speech and sign language. I contemplate going back there to check on them, but the bell rings, and I have to go to class. They join me a few minutes later, and the thoughts I had in my mind before all slipped in the routine of school life.
By the time I remember, school is over for the day and I'm too tired to do anything but go home, do my homework, and then go to sleep. All right, everyone, and that's the episode. All right, that was a shorter episode. I'm kind of disappointed about that. So we're going to leave the knocking going, and we'll see you all in the next video, okay? If you like the video, leave a like. If you want to see more, subscribe. And as always, I will see you in the next video. Peace.